Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how you can use date functions to create this unit sold sales predictor. Okay, so this question came from a YouTube watcher, and they wanted to be able to predict how many sales in a particular month given the number of units sold so far. So if we were to pretend it was May 5th, and a person has sold three units in, um, in May over the five days, we can extrapolate that out that they will sell 18.6 units for the month. So in order to create this, we do need to work with a couple of date functions and a nested if function. Now, if you look in the video description, you will find a link to where you can grab this spreadsheet. For today, let's work on this mock-up. And I'm going to use this so that we can figure out the kind of date functions we'll need. I'm going to start over here with my dates. And basically, I want to produce dates based off today's date. And we're pretending it's May 5th, 2019. So for my first date, I'm going to use the date function. I'm going to get the year from the cell that contains today's date. I'll use an absolute on that and then comma, give me a one for the month and a one for the day, and that's gonna give me January 1st, 2019. Now for the next date, I'll use the edate function to take my starting date of 1119 and then add one month. So it's February 1st, 2019. I'm gonna bring this all the way down to January of 2020. Okay, now I don't want these to actually display as short dates though. I want them to display just the name of the month. So I'm going to select those, use my formatting dropdown, I'll do more number formats, custom, and then for the type, I'm just going to put in MMMM, which will give me simply the full month spelled out. I'll click OK. So it looks like these are just typed in months, but they are actual dates, the first of each month. That's why they're aligned to the right instead of to the left. Now for this January one, I don't really care about that, but I don't want to delete it. I'm just going to fade it out to gray so it's out of the way visually, but it is going to come in handy for one of our calculations. Now that we have this information, units sold is simply going to be hard-coded numbers. If we're pretending it's May 5th, then we definitely have some known sales for the previous months. Now, since it's May, that's going to be a smaller number because we're pretending we've only gone five days into May. And then for the future dates, I'll just put zero. The prediction I'm going to hold off for a bit because before we can construct the prediction formula, which is going to be a nested if, you need to be aware of other date functions so that we can figure out how many days are in a month and how many days have passed. Of course, this is going to make the most sense for May, which is the month we're pretending that it is. So I'm going to start off with May for the number of days in the month. And I'm going to do a days function. Now with the days function, it's going to subtract one date from another date. So I'm going to take the next month, which is June 1st, 2019, comma, the current month. And that's going to tell me how many days are in that month. And I can fill this down, click on the cell, fill it up. And we can see that it's working because February only has 28 days. And in fact, if we were to change this to a 2020 date, let's say 6-6-2020, which is a leap year, we'll see that now in 2020, February will have 29 days. I'll put this back to 5-5-19. So we're using the days function to subtract some dates and tell us how many days there are in a month. Now for the current month, in this case May, we need to know how many days into the month we are. And that's going to be pretty easy because there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, for one, we could simply do a little bit of subtraction and we could write in equals today's date minus the first of that month. So that would be 5 minus 1. That would give us 4. And then if we just added 1 to that, that would give us 5. And that would be accurate if it was May 5th. We're in the fifth day of May. Well, we could also do this too. Equal day of a date. So I'm using the day function. And I'll just extract that we are now in the fifth day of, of, of May. And so if this was May 12th, 19, we'd be in the 12 there. Now that we have this information, we can actually do our prediction. So if I've sold three units 
over five days, that means I've sold 0.6 units per day. And if I know there's 31 days in the month of May, I can take the number of units I've sold per day, multiply by the number of days in the month, and that's gonna give me 18.6, which is my prediction for May based on my units sold. And in the next video, we'll use our new information to construct a nested if for the current month prediction.